Okay, so this video is to show how to uh, remove the neck from the pot on one of my banjos, which you'd most often want to do if you were adjusting the truss rod or for any other reason why you might want to. So, I already slackened off the strings because I don't have much recording time on this camera before it runs out of storage space. So that just, you just, you know, slacken them off a few turns, then pop the bridge out, uh, unscrew this little this little nut on the end of the tailpiece bolt, just unscrew it by hand. If it's tight and you need to, you can use a quarter inch uh, socket or, or a wrench or whatever. Then pop the pop the bolt and the tailpiece right out of there. They just slide out. So now I have to wiggle them a little bit. Then take, I use an awl, but you can use a nail or any other skinny thing that'll fit in there just to start that. Unscrew that end bolt that just spins right off of there. and Or you can put a wrench across the two flats where those two holes are. Then flip the banjo over. I use a, an old a retired t-shirt as a pad on the workbench to so not just scuff the wood. Use a 5 16 socket or a wrench or anything you have handy. You can uh, unscrew this screw here, just loosen it up, you don't have to take it out all the way. Push the pin out. It's a little roll pin here. You've got a little yoke here that comes out and the little plate that comes out, so that's all very quick. And you flip it back over, slide it out, and there is your truss rod uh, adjustment right up inside that hole. It uses a 5 3rd seconds or 4 millimeter Allen key. It's the same size, just metric or SAE. So uh, then to put it back together, you just reverse the procedure, just uh, slide it back in. I, I like to put the end bolt back on first it kind of pulls it in, makes it easier to install the pin in the yoke later. So get it finger tight and roll the banjo over. Look at that and see if, make sure the frets are parallel with the tension hoop, that the, the neck is in the same plane as the pot so that it's not off sides. Uh, then you use the awl or whatever to tighten that to the point where the hole is up and down so that the bolt can go through it later. Then the plate goes on here. Then the yoke goes on, the pin goes back in. Sometimes you gotta wiggle them a little bit or them in from one end or the other. Then you just finger tighten this bolt until it uh, starts to grab. Make sure the pin is centered. Take your 5 sixteenths and just, just snug it up. You know, it doesn't have to be super tight. If you, if you over tighten it, it'll just push the metal into the wood and that doesn't really help, so just kinda snug. And then flip it back over, take your tailpiece, try to get the strings all back in their respective nut slots, which is a bit of a puzzle sometimes, but usually it can be done. And put the bolt back through the hole in the end bolt, put the nut back on the bolt, and you don't have to I, again, get this super tight. Just, just finger tight is good, um, generally. And then you're ready to tune it back up. You know, pop the bridge back roughly in place. Put the strings back in their little homes there. And then, yeah, once I tune it up, I usually just, uh, once this is tuned to D, I put my finger on here, at 12th fret, and uh, make sure it's playing a D an octave higher. If it's flat, then your bridge is too far back. If it's sharp, then your bridge is too far forward. Just keep moving it until you get the same note open and at the 12th fret, but an octave apart. So it's pretty quick and easy once you get used to it. I hope that uh, helps explain the situation. Thanks for watching.